hello students now i am going to speak about how a lithium bromide refrigeration system works first of all let us see an experiment we can see that there are two vessels left and right in the left vessel some water is contained and in the right vessel there is a solution of lithium bromide with water there is a stop cock in between which is disconnecting the two vessels in picture b we can see that the stop cock has been removed now what is happening the water vapor automatically coming out from the left hand vessel and going to mix with lithium bromide solution in the right hand side vessel why it is so it is because lithium bromide is a very hydroscopic substance means it has tendency it has affinity toward water if water is contained surrounding lithium bromide then it will try to absorb the water in it so what is happening from the left hand side vessel the water vapor is automatically coming out and mixing with lithium bromide solution in the right vessel but we know that in the left hand side vessel the water is vaporizing but without heat how can water will vaporize whenever any liquid vaporizes it needs latent heat from where the latent heat is coming see in this case the water vapor is obtaining the latent heat from the liquid water itself since it is taking away the latent heat of the liquid water so the left amount of water in the left hand vessel is continuously cooling because latent heat is taken away by the water vapor which is going to mix with the lithium bromide solution now in case we want the lithium bromide solution to again release the water what we have to do a simple process is there simply heat the lithium bromide solution what will happen in case we will heat the solution then the tendency the affinity of lithium bromide with water decreases we can see in the experiment that the right hand side vessel is been heated by some source so what is happening the water vapor is again coming out from the lithium bromide solution and condensing in the left hand vessel which is containing water this is what the principle behind lithium bromide refrigeration cycle now <coughs> let's see how lithium bromide refrigeration cycle works we can see the principle diagram of lithium bromide refrigeration system we can see there are two vessels one vessel is at bottom which is containing lithium bromide weak solution and one vessel which is in upper side which is containing lithium bromide strong solution and there is an evaporator vessel which is containing pure water with it the evaporator vessel is contained inside the weak solution vessel but the evaporator vessel is been separated with the lithium bromide solution of weak solution vessel now we can see there is a condenser and this evaporator vessel is having a pass of hot water which is coming out and getting chilled now how it is working see the principle is in the evaporator vessel there is pure water and in the bottom there is lithium bromide solution we know lithium bromide has tendency has affinity toward water so what will happen from this evaporator vessel the water will automatically spontaneously evaporate and mix with lithium bromide solution so by this way since water vapor is coming out from evaporator vessel so it will take the latent heat from the left water in the evaporator vessel so it will cool down the water which is contained in the evaporator vessel so by this way the water contained in the evaporator vessel will be chilled its temperature will be lowered now since water vapor is mixing with lithium bromide solution which is contained in the bottom so what will happen we have to get it released from water so for this purpose what is happening we can see between point 1 and 2 there is a pump installed this pump is taking the solution of lithium bromide to the upper vessel that is containing lithium bromide strong solution we can see a heat source is subjected to this vessel so what will happen the water vapor 
will be released out from the lithium bromide solution and the solution will become strong because water is releasing from lithium bromide so the concentration of the lithium bromide in the left solution is increasing now we can see by the help of a return duct between point 3 and 4 this strong solution is again going to the weak solution vessel now since heat is provided in the lithium bromide strong solution vessel so the water vapor which is been released by lithium bromide is been passed through a condenser between point 5 and 6 we can see these water vapors are passing through a condenser in the condenser these water vapor will lose its latent heat and again become liquid water this liquid water is then again poured in the evaporator vessel so by this way we are getting a chilling effect by lithium bromide refrigeration system the advantage of lithium bromide refrigeration system is by the help of heat only we can get refrigeration effect because pump consumes negligible amount of power and the disadvantage is that we cannot get a temperature below 0 degree centigrade because in case the temperature falls below 0 degree centigrade then it will develop icing in the water which is contained in the water ultimately the water will freeze and it will choke the entire process so this is how a lithium bromide refrigeration system works now i am going to explain you some details regarding steam jet refrigeration system first of all we know this thing that the boiling point or the saturation temperatures of water depends on the pressure applied over water in case the pressure over water is increased then its boiling point also increases and in case the pressure is decreased then boiling point also decreases in case we want to boil the water at 2 degree centigrade then we have to decrease its pressure to 0 0.006 bar which is a vacuum pressure water boils at 100 degree centigrade in case the pressure over it is 1 bar it will boil at 120 degree centigrade in case the pressure over it is 2 bars similarly with increasing pressure the boiling point or saturation temperature of water increases continuously and one thing more we know that for a liquid to change its phase to vapor form it needs latent heat means at boiling point in case latent heat is provided then liquid changes into vapor and in case at the corresponding boiling point the latent heat of vapor is removed then it changes to liquid form now let's see an experiment we can see there are two vessels a and b which are contained with some water and having some amount of water vapor over the surface of water in diagram a there is nothing but a simple container containing some water and having some water vapor over the surface of water in container b a vacuum pump is applied to suck the vapor from the container and to pull it out to the atmosphere now in this process what will happen in case we are removing some amount of water vapor over the surface of liquid water then it will create a void inside the container so due to that void a vacuum will be created so what will happen it will decrease the boiling point of water so it will start vaporizing spontaneously without any application of heat why because the boiling point or the saturation temperature is continuously decreasing due to continued vacuumization of the container as the vacuum pump is continuously removing the water vapor which is formed over the surface of water but we know that in case water converts to its vapor form it needs latent heat so from where it will obtain the latent heat it will obtain the latent heat from the liquid water itself so what will happen it will decrease the temperature of the left liquid water in the container means continuously the water vapor will form 
due to the suction of vacuum pump and that water vapor will take away the latent heat from the water itself since no heat is provided to water so due to the removal of latent heat from the water by the water vapors the temperature of the rest amount of water which is left in the container will continuously decrease now here a vacuum pump has been applied but let us see a device called as steam ejector nozzle in a steam ejector nozzle what is happening in the picture we can see a steam ejector nozzle the purpose of steam ejector nozzle is to create vacuum by the help of moving high velocity steam we can see there is a casing in which there are three ends b c and a from end b a very high velocity of steam jet is issuing and simply entering to the opening c and we can see from end a some vapors are coming which are at lower temperature compared to that of the temperature of steam which is issuing from opening b so what is happening since with very high velocity steam is coming from end b and entering to the end c some amount of water vapor will be entertained will be trapped by this high velocity steam and taken away to end c so what will happen continuously there will be a entertainment of low temperature water vapor with this jet and it will be taken away to end c so it will induce more and more water vapor from end a and it will create a vacuum a dynamic vacuum at point a so we summarize steam is issuing from point b to point c with very high velocity some amount of water vapor coming from end a when reaches the vicinity of the steam jet flowing from end b to c and traps with this steam jet so it is been carried away or rushed away out of end c by the help of this steam jet means the water vapors coming from end a are been taken away by the steam jet out of the end c so continuously at point a at end a a vacuum has been created this steam ejector nozzle is what the principal component of a steam jet refrigeration system now let us use this steam ejector nozzle for making a steam jet refrigeration system what we see steam is been generated in a boiler and this steam is been fed to the steam ejector nozzle now steam is issuing from point a and entering to the point b now we can see there is a evaporator vessel in which some liquid water is been contained over this liquid water up to the point c there is some amount of water vapor present now since steam is issuing from point a and entering to the point b so what will happen it will entertain some amount of water vapors with it and will come out from point b so what will happen continuous removal of this water vapor from the evaporator vessel will make a vacuum over the water surface to fill up this vacuum more and more water will vaporize in the evaporator vessel but we know vaporization needs latent heat so these water vapors when will vaporize it will take the latent heat from the left water itself inside the evaporator so it will make the water to chill up because latent heat is been removed from the water now the steam which is taking and carrying the water vapors entertaining the water vapors with it from point b is been passed through a condenser so in the condenser what is happening this steam is losing heat and again becoming water so this mixture will again become liquefied and by the help of pump this liquid water is then again been fed to the boiler itself the heat is provided to the boiler by the help of some heat source now we know in the evaporator vessel water is evaporating continuously means there is a loss of some water because water is evaporating and entertaining with the steam jet and going away and ultimately going inside the boiler so to compensate this thing there is an extra pump 
which is providing makeup water to the evaporator now the water inside the evaporator is continuously chilling this chilling effect is used to cool the cooling load or the cooling space we can see a heat exchanger has been applied a hot fluid is entering inside passing through the evaporator vessel through the liquid water and coming out with low temperature so by this way the cooling load or refrigeration effect is been obtained in the cooling space the hot fluid is going inside the evaporator vessel by the help of tubings means actually it is not mixing with the water inside the evaporator it is simply passing through the pipes taking the coolness of the water and then again coming out and this cool water is used for the cooling load so this is how a steam jet refrigeration system works this is the principle behind the steam jet refrigeration system so we summarize what is happening steam is been formed in the boiler from the steam ejector nozzle a very high velocity of steam jet is issuing from point a and ultimately going inside the end b and in the evaporator vessel some liquid water is contained which is having some amount of water vapor over it now these water vapors are been entertained by the steam jet and carried away to the condenser in the condenser this steam is been condensed and again becomes liquid this liquid water is again pumped back to the boiler for boiling purpose now since the water vapor is continuously been removed from the evaporator vessel so it decreases the pressure over the water and by this way the boiling point or the saturation temperature of the water also decreases so when water vapor is continuously removed from the evaporator vessel more and more vapors are been formed and for formation of vapor we know latent heat is required so this latent heat is been taken by these water vapors from the water itself so by this way the water is cooled down and this cooling effect is used for developing refrigeration effect in the cooling space